Well, uh, this is old Tucker back again, and I thank you kindly for you folks out there that's been listening to me. I love to tell a little bit about how life was raised up here in these mountains. If you're listening, I appreciate you. That's all I can tell you. God bless you all, but somebody asked me what it's like in during this fall, how we got ready for the winter. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about that. So when we we got the first hints of a chill started to creep in the air, we, we knew it's time to get ready for a old man winter out here in the mountains. Fall was a busy season for us. That's a time when everyone in the family had their own tasks. We had jobs to do to ensure that we got ready for that long, cold winter months we had it coming. Growing up in these mountains, you learn early that if you don't get prepared in the fall, winter would not forgive you for it. You'd get a bad, bad time coming towards you. First sign it's time to get to work was when them leaves started to turn, usually about sometime towards October, late September sometimes, just depending on the, how cold it got and how wet it was. But there's signs, signs you had to read and know to know. Temperature starts a dropping, well then your mountains would start to get colorful. Them leaves would turn red and orange and yellow. It was a beautiful reminder that we didn't have much time before the first frost would set in, so we had to get ready. I always loved the sight of those trees, but I did know one thing, it meant the hard work was ahead. So they was awful pretty, but they was a, just a pretty warning sign to me. Old Daddy, he'd get out there and he'd start cutting wood. We had an old stove. We used the wood to heat our little cabin. and It was our lifeline during the winter. Every year, we needed a good old stockpile of firewood. That's what helped us make it through them old cold winter months. Daddy, he'd head out early in the morning. He'd have that ax over his shoulder and I'd follow right behind him. We'd find trees that were either dead or dying. It was a lot easier to take down. And the ones that had fell down by themselves, well, that was even better. We just set to work on We'd, old daddy would chop and I'd gather the smaller branches and the kindling wood, stacking everything up there just as neat as I could and by the wood pile there at the cabin. We had it out there on the porch. We had some on the porch and some inside the cabin. And by the time we was done, our wood pile would stand tall. It was like a wall of protection against the cold that was coming. I remember just how satisfied I felt seeing that stack of far wood growing every day a little bit more, every day. More and more to it stacked up knowing we'd be warm and comfortable whole family was a, and there's something that I helped, helped to do. It made me feel quite proud of myself. I loved my mama and daddy. While daddy and I was out cutting wood, old mama would be busy in the garden. Last of them summer vegetables had been harvested, and it's time to start canning. She'd fill the kitchen up the smell of boiling tomatoes, beans, and corn. His mama worked over the stove. I love them boiled tomatoes, I tell you that. Still ain't nothing like them. She'd spend hours canning jar after jar. Her hands just moved like a doctor's hands. It's just over and over, she knew exactly what she needed to do and how to do it. 
You know, I'd help out when I could, and my sisters would help. And we'd wipe them jars clean, and set them on the shelf in our pantry. By the time we was done, the shelves would be lined with rows of jars full of colors, just like the mountains. The leaves of the mountains is just colorful. That's food that would help sustain us all winter long. We had to make it last, and so you'd know you didn't need a bite more than you needed to. You try to make it last because you knew it could get real cold and real fast out there if you weren't paying no attention. Another thing we had to look out for is them animals. Is we had to pin up them chickens, make them more secure, and then them hogs, we fatten them up for butchering come on later on in the year. I spent my time a lot of days gathering eggs and making sure them chickens had enough feed and checking that coop, making sure it was sturdy and stout so that it keep out them foxes and coyotes. They was uh, got hungry too. One of my favorite things to do was to gather up nuts in woods full of hickory nuts and black walnuts. And I still love black walnuts. They're my favorites. I can eat them all day long. And Dixie says I do sometimes. <laughs> we'd spend all afternoon collecting them in burlap saps. We'd, my fingers would be filthy after that. You couldn't get it out from save your soul. You'd... Mama would dry them out and store them away. And come winter, we'd crack them open by the fireplace. We'd enjoy it, taste, and you could taste the earth in it. And especially I remember days when that wind was a howling outside and eating them nuts. And I felt a good peace about me because we was in that warm home and daddy and mommy had took care of us. But as them gray days grew shorter and the nights colder, we'd pull out quilts that had been stored away. Mama made those quilts herself. She'd stitched together every scrap of them from the fabric of our old clothes. Each one of them to tell a story. They're as much as part of our winter preparation as four wood and canned goods. By the time that first frost covered the ground, we'd be ready for pantry was full, wood piles stacked up high, and that cabin was as snug as it could be against that coming cold. That work was hard, but it brought us together. And there was a deep, deep sense of satisfaction. You'd be right proud of yourself knowing that we was prepared. Winter in these old mountains can be harsh. Y'all know that, but it's, it also can bring a strange peace. The world outside would get quiet under a blanket of snow, but inside we'd be as warm as toast. And we ate pretty good. I never remember being particularly hungry back then. We had the fruits of our labor to feed us. As I grew older, I realized that Getting ready for that winter wasn't just about survival. It was about taking care of each other, about the rhythms of the land and the seasons, about that deep bond we had with the place we called home. These old mountains taught us patience and hard work and gratitude. Them lessons stayed with me long after the snow melted and, and the spring thaw began. But that pretty much how we got ready for winter. I hope you four folks just enjoyed this. And thank you kindly for listening and appreciate your questions and your comments. And my grandson reads them to me. I ain't much on the computer stuff. And he just told me to start talking and that's about what I do. <laughs> Y'all have yourselves a good one and God bless you until next time here. This is old Tucker.